Hey, welcome back, everyone. So today, 23 years ago, the Chinese Communist Party launched what is really probably the biggest genocide in the world right now. A hundred million people roughly persecuted, tortured, killed, and harvested for their organs, sometimes while they're still alive. Uh, this is the persecution of Falun Gong, and really something that the media has not in any way, and I'm not talking about Epic Times, but a lot of the mainstream media has not in any way really given proper weight to. Uh, this is a persecution that's impacted one out of roughly every 13 Chinese people and really has created the whole pay-to-play systems uh, uh, that has really created a lot of corruption within the Chinese Communist Party. If you want to rise up in the ranks of the Chinese Communist Party, you have to get blood on your hands. And this is how it works. This is important for a lot of reasons. One of the big ones is that companies doing business in China, investment firms doing business in China, BlackRock, for example, Gates, for example, many others, they may be implicated in this in the future. And the reason for this actually ties to back to a tribunal that took place in 2019 in the UK, which actually declared that the Chinese Communist Party is harvesting the organs from living people, oftentimes without painkillers, usually without painkillers, uh, with a murder-for-profit scheme that is constitutes a genocide. They, they place it on par with the Holocaust. It's, that's the way they describe it. And that companies, businesses, investors, and so on, that have continued to do business with China despite that, are doing business with a criminal regime, meaning they may be implicated in the future. I want to show you all the evidence on this, because I know a lot of people still wonder, well, is this really happening? Like, is there really organ harvesting taking place in China? And yes, there is. And I, I think the reason a lot of people don't think that maybe it's happening or they're not sure whether it's happening is mainly because, well, frankly, a lot of the media, whenever they write about it, they say it's suggested or claimed or rumored and so on. When in reality, there's been substantial reporting and it's now definitive. It's, it's happening without a shadow of a doubt and on a very large scale. So, folks, going to be an interesting uh, episode today, one that I think is really important, not just, again, as it relates to just human rights, but as it relates to possible human rights trials that may be soon to come. Uh, really, when the, when the light comes out on this, we're going to see Nuremberg-like trials uh, for members of the Chinese Communist Party and very likely Western businessmen, Western investors who've taken part in this, and there's going to be a lot of them. Let me show you what do we have, folks. I want to start now by going into J July 20th, 1999, which is when the persecution of Falun Gong started, how the live, li live organ harvesting issue was exposed, and also some of the evidence and proof that's come out since then. And uh, we're also going to have a guest on today with Doctors Against Forced Organ Harvesting. So if you have any questions and so on, uh, we're going to have a guest on who can answer a lot of those. The other big side of this is that this organ harvesting system is corrupting the fields of medicine. Uh, another big issue and something to watch out for as this thing advances. All right, said folks, again, uh, those of you on YouTube, remember after about 20, 25 minutes, we will jump exclusively over to Epic TV. So if you don't have an account yet, be sure to grab that. Uh, we're going to be a free trial. It's in the description below this video. And also, it helps us do what we're doing. So I appreciate the support, and also, we give you some great content with that. Um, also, we do the live Q&A over on Epic TV. So if you want to join the live Q&A, you have questions you want to discuss, uh, there's always some really great discussion. So be sure to come join us over on Epic TV. Even if you just want, to, just want to check it out, grab that free trial. So let's jump into it. I want to show you how this really started. So long story, I'll, I'll go more into the persecution of Falun Gong as we get the guest on later. But briefly, so Falun Gong is a Chinese meditation practice. Imagine imagine if the U.S. government tomorrow said, hey, uh, yoga is now illegal. Basically, Falun Gong was a Qigong practice, which is like you see Chinese people doing slow movements in the parks. The Chinese Communist Party declared it was a threat to the atheistic rule of the Communist Party at a time when it was the most popular Qigong practice in China, uh, roughly 100 million people practicing. And it declared that anybody practicing it would be subject to arrest and possibly murder, uh, which did happen. One out of every 13 Chinese people was made into a criminal overnight. And we found out, Epic Times found out around 2006, about you know, seven years after the persecution had started, 
that very likely they were using prisoners of conscience, religious believers in this case, as living sources for organ transplants. And this was an international crime ring essentially run by the Chinese Communist Party, Chinese hospitals, and particularly the Chinese military. A lot of this was taking place through Chinese military hospitals. You had systems including organ tourism, where even doctors in foreign countries were involved in this, sending patients to China for organ transplants, uh, some, sometimes maybe not knowing full well what was happening, but having at least the, the subtle idea, right? I mean, having at least the subtle idea that, of course, the Chinese Communist Party was using executed prisoners. What they did not realize is that a prisoner in China is not necessarily a real criminal. In this case, again, it was religious believers, and this continues today. So, 2006, some stories started coming out. Epic Times broke a lot of them. We had whistleblowers stepping forward. I was actually with Epic Times at that time, and my, my career with Epic Times started in 2006, in fact. There were whistleblowers stepping forward, including, um, including people who had worked in the Chinese military, high-ranking officers, including one woman was the wife of one of the transplant doctors, and the claims they had were shocking. Uh, I mean, I, I don't want to get too graphic with you folks, but some of them were extremely disturbing. Um, one of the women who stepped forward, she was the wife of a doctor, she came, she came forward and had a horrifying story to tell, that her husband, who was a transplant doctor, basically was just staying up at night, staring off into space, cold sweats, like something wasn't right with him. Finally, one day, he confided in her, and he said that his job was to harvest the corneas from the eyes of children, living children. Um, and, of course, he understood that they were still alive while he was doing this. The woman, when she found out she divorced him, left China, came to the United States, and became a whistleblower. She was among the first. We had others soon after stepping forward, one of them being a high-ranking Chinese military officer, and he had horrifying stories as well. Rumors of trains being uh, transporting people, prisoners, people hung up like cattle, uh, you know, hands handcuffed with metal bars attached to the ceiling, and people you know, strung up like cattle to these metal bars across the ceiling of these train cars, being moved to Chinese military hospitals and being moved through the system. I'm going to show you one of the articles we had back in 2006 as we began researching this, as the rumors were first coming out, and we were just trying to figure out if these things were true or not, because they were horrifying stories, um, evidence from the individuals coming out and blowing the whistle on this aligned with some of the weird testing that some of the human rights, you know, people who had escaped prison or, uh, you know, fled the country had told us as well. And so the evidence lined up. We were just trying to figure out, well, is this really true? Let me show you this. This is 2006, the Epic Times. It says, doctors in China working overtime on organ transplants. It says, Falun Gong practitioners in underground concentration camps, including Su uh, Jiatun camp, have been secretly relocated and are subject to slaughter at any time. Meanwhile, some hospitals in China have suddenly increased the number of transplant operations, apparently a massacre with the purpose of exterminating all witnesses of such concentration camps is taking place right now in China. This was 2006. That was an urgent announcement issued by clearwisdom.net on April 6, 2006. It was a Falun, Falun Dafa website, mainly on human rights issues. It says, reporters from Sound of Hope Radio, independent media, made phone calls to major hospitals in China with a human organ transplant department in order to assess the current situation. Most of the medical doctors that answered the phone gave the same guarantee. There will be an unusually large number of organ donors before May 1st. That's, this was in 2006. After that date, after May 1st, the chance of a donor will become much smaller. Now, so basically, there were reporters making phone calls into China. They were calling up Chinese hospitals, you know, mainly the ones that do organ transplants. And these reporters, of course, speaking Chinese, we're asking these hospitals, oh, do you have organs? I need to get a liver transplant. I need to get a heart transplant. And the doctors on the other end were saying, of course, in Chinese, yes, we have tons. Come anytime. 
they were asking, well, how long is the wait? They're like, maybe a, a week, maybe a, a couple of days. Anybody who knows how organ transplants usually work, anybody who understands this, uh, maybe you've had a family member who's needed one or you just looked into it, you'll know that it's not like you wait a couple of days and get an organ transplant. You go on a waiting list and it's sometimes, sometimes a very long time. The way that organ transplants typically work in the United States and other parts of the world is it's based on a donor system. And so it's a person gets in a car accident or a person you know, has an unfortunate accident that renders them brain dead. And because they're brain dead, they may have signed up to become organ donors, which you can sign up for when you get your driver's license. And they can voluntarily give their organs if they are in such a state, right? This state where they're brain dead. You can't predict that normally. And even then, even if you're on the list and there's a donor that comes up, it's a very complex process because it has to match your DNA. There has to be a DNA match. And even then, there's other processes as well. It's not easy to get an organ donor for especially things like hearts. In China, they say pretty much like buffet, come, come and get all you need. And this is what happened. So actually, this article we had that I'm showing you actually had the audio recordings included with it. Our reporter back at that time in 2006 actually made a lot of phone calls to try to corroborate what other media were finding, other independent media, not mainstream media, were finding at that time. Now, mainstream media, I should note, New York Times and others, they were claiming this whole thing was just rumors and propaganda or whatever else. Like, they were pretty much siding with the Chinese Communist Party. But of course, independent media, a small handful of them, Epic Times being the main one, uh, were trying to verify whether or not this was true. This article that I'm showing you right now, they did the phone calls, they recorded those phone calls, and they included the phone calls in this article. I won't play them yet. I'll, at the end of this episode, let's see if I can play you some, but they're in Chinese, and so it's done, you know, unless you speak Chinese, it's not going to be interesting for you. But it says this further in. According to doctors interviewed, all the donors are in their 20s and 30s. Young people, right? Not, not elderly people having issues. Suddenly, tons of donors, any donor you could need, all in their, mostly in their 20s and 30s. They're very healthy, which is odd as well, because why would healthy people be dead, essentially? They, they could take their organs. And the doctors guarantee that livers and kidneys are from living human beings. So, not dead. They can even provide a whole liver, they said, which is also unusual. Now, so for some blood type, they can find matching donors right away, instantly. Again, something you just don't have happen. Now, it says further in, since Su Jiatun concentration camp was exposed to the world, the World Organization to Investigate the Persecution of Falun Gong immediately started an investigation all over China. Their investigation revealed that there were at least eight provinces in, and cities in China that harvest internal organs from living Falun Gong practitioners, including Hunan Province, Shandong Province, Shanghai, Guangzhou, Beijing, Tianjin, Liaoning Province, and Hubei Province. Employees and surgeons in hospitals of these areas guaranteed the investigators they could supply Falun Gong practitioners internal organs. If you read the actual transcripts, the doctors were very open about it at that time. After these initial investigations came out, they became less forthcoming. They became a little more cautious about what they said over the phone. But they confirmed, if you listen to the audio recordings, and if they have transcripts of them, of course, that these are from Falun Gong practitioners, they're from healthy people, they're from young people, and the organs are being taken from people who are still alive. Now, this sparked a lot of international concern. A lot of media, of course, wrote it off, you know, the mainstream media, I should say. A lot of the mainstream media wrote this off and said, oh, it's unfounded rumors, it's fake news, or whatever, you know, the stuff they always do. But a handful of people internationally decided to look into it. Two of those individuals uh, were the former, a former Canadian member of Parliament, that was David Kilgore, and an international human rights lawyer, David Mattis. They launched an, inter, an independent investigation from from Canada. You know, former Canadian member of former member of the Canadian government, of course, you know, Parliament, and a human rights lawyer launched an independent investigation, and they published their findings in a book that's called "Bloody Harvest: The Killing of Falun Gong for Their Organs." 
Now, they understood that when you're, for example, these guys had previously investigated like Holocaust issues, David Mattis in particular, and he understood that when you're dealing with a, dealing with a genocide, when you're dealing with a state-run system to eradicate groups of a society, that oftentimes they take steps to cover it up. And so they understood that there has to be circumstantial evidence. You gain all, you gain all the evidence from all the periphery and then work your way in and see how far you can get. This was their conclusion on that. This is Fallen Info, one of the Fallen Dafi Human Rights websites that had an excerpt of it. Let me show you. They said this, when we began our work, we had no... This is David Madison, and David Kilgore in their book, again, Bloody Harvest. They wrote this. When we began our work, we had no views whether the allegations were true or untrue. The allegations were so shocking that they are almost impossible to believe. Our preference would have been to find that the allegations to be untrue. The allegations, if true, represented a disgusting form of evil, which, despite all the depra depravities humanity has seen, was new to this planet. The very horror made us reel back in disbelief, but disbelief did not mean that the allegations were untrue. Further in, they state, our conclusion is that there has been and continues today to be large-scale organ seizure from unwilling Falun Gong practitioners. We have concluded that the government of China and its agencies in numerous parts of the country, in particular hospitals but also detention centers and quote-unquote people's courts, since 1999, when the persecution began, today's the anniversary again, July 20th, since 1999 have put to death a large but unknown number of Falun Gong prisoners of conscience. Their vital organs, including kidneys, livers, corneas, and hearts, were seized involuntarily for the sale at high prices, sometimes to foreigners who normally face long waits for voluntary donations of such organs in their home countries. In 2008, shortly after they wrote that, shortly after they published their findings, uh, David Mattis actually wrote an open letter. This was in the special consultative status with the United Nations. And so they were trying to raise concerns and, you know, raise investigations with this through the United Nations and trying to get things moving on. Just keep in mind this is 2008, so a good while back now when they were trying to do this. And this was before, the, before, before I'd say the CCP had really gained a lot of control that it now has over the United Nations. You know, the CCP now essentially controls to a large extent the Human Rights Council. But back then, that wasn't the case. And David Mattis wrote this open letter back then. 2008, he said this, talking about, again, their investigations that they had done in 2006. He said, the report is now over two years old. The fact that over those two years, the report has survived the scrutiny of peer review has not been contradicted in any way whatsoever serves to validate the report. In other words, the, the findings they published in Bloody Harvest were never, were never debunked. They were, they were peer-reviewed, they were never debunked, they stood solid, and they were saying based on that alone, that should have raised some serious alarms at the United Nations. There should have been real, like, you know, Holocaust-level, you know, tribunals looking into this, essentially, at that time. Uh, there should have been, like, Nuremberg trials, putting these people on trial, and this is the issue he was raising at that time. He said the sheer silliness, right, the sheer silliness and, and vacuity uh, of the Chinese government response means that the government of China, in substance, has nothing to say in answer to our report. And he says the peer review to which I am referring is that of the University of Minnesota Associate, Director of the Program in Human Rights and Medicine, Kirk Allison of British Transport... Uh, tran of transplant surgeon Tom Treasure, and of Yale University thesis student Hao Wong. They have all independently from us and each other confirmed the conclusions of the report and supported its accuracy. Meaning that even back then, even back in 2008, this was deemed as credible, this was deemed as serious, and also deemed as something that should have been in criminally investigated. At that time, you still had the issue that the media right, the New York Times and others were still denying it. And even now you'll see a lot of them say it's unfounded rumors and so on. The irony is that the statement these were unfounded rumors were themselves unfounded. 
These were media lying and covering up one of the biggest crimes against humanity I think the world has ever seen. I'll show you some more on this in a bit. Folks, real quick, though, we do have a sponsor today. That's American Hartford Gold. Inflation at its highest level in 40 years. Interest rates are skyrocketing, and a recession now looms ahead of us. Caught between runaway inflation and a recession, our retirement accounts are in real danger. If you want to protect your future, you can call American Hartford Gold. They can show you how to protect your savings and retirement accounts by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. All it takes to get started is a short phone call and have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or into your IRA or 401k. And they make it easy as well. They're the highest rated firm in the country with an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau and thousands of satisfied clients. If you call them right now, they'll give you $2,500 of free silver on your first order and also or give you up to. And they'll also give you a free safe. So don't wait. Call them now. That's 877-260-2764. That's 877-260-2764. Or you can text Joshua to 65532. Now, I want to go over this a bit more because, you know, I'm talking about what happened really a while back, 2008. Unfortunately, after David Kilgore and David Mattis released their reports, they became really two of the only major voices talking about this. One of the other major voices was an independent investigative journalist named Ethan Gutman, who also did his own uh, book on this called Slaughter, um, talking again about organ harvesting. And these three individuals toured around the world for years, they still do, trying to raise awareness over this human rights abuse. These were not Falun Gong petitioners. These are, I don't know what their religions are. I think, I think one might be Jewish, and I think two might be Christian, but I'm not quite sure. But they were raising this issue because this, as they made clear, is really one of the most serious human rights abuses the world has ever seen. Finally, in 2019, a major breakthrough took place. There was additional research over the years. Epic Times, we were one of the few media that continued reporting on this. Uh, and one of the few media that really, I think, did our investigations on this. And so we did have pretty constant coverage on this over the course of you know all these years. In 2019, though, a tribunal in the United Kingdom actually, for several years, had been investigating this. They held a trial. Like, it was actually a pretty, pretty substantive investigation held a trial, and they determined that the Chinese Communist Party is, in fact, harvesting organs from Falun Gong practitioners. That report in 2019, not that long ago, was ground-shaking. That report actually got the attention of the mainstream media and international leadership, and that report began changing things. Unfortunately, I'd say that a lot of the mainstream media, for some reason, when they write about organ harvesting, they still say claimed or rumored or whatever, when in reality it was investigated fully and determined without a doubt to be happening. They had over 50 witnesses who testified. It was chaired by Sir Geoffrey Nice, uh, QC. Let me show you The Guardian. They actually had an article on it at that time. The Guardian said this, China is harvesting organs from detainees, tribunal concludes. And it says an independent tribunal sitting in London has concluded that the killing of detainees in China for organ transplants is continuing, and victims include imprisoned followers of, follow, of the Falun Gong movement. What they really determined was that the overwhelming, overwhelming majority were Falun Gong practitioners, but again, it continues stating the, the China Tribunal, chaired by Sir Geoffrey Nice, uh, QC, who was a prosecutor at the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, for former Yugoslavia, said in a unanimous determination at the end of its hearings, it was certain, quote, certain that Falun Gong as a source, probably the principal source, of organs uh, for forced organ harvesting. And it said the conclusion shows that the, that the very many people have died indescribably hideous deaths for no reason, that, may, that more may suffer in similar ways, and that all of us live on a planet where extreme wickedness may be found in the, power, in the power of those for the time being running a country with one of the oldest civilizations known to modern man. He continues, There's no evidence of the practice having been stopped, and the tribunal is satisfied that it is continuing. 
says this, continuing that the tribunal has been taking evidence from medical experts, human rights investigators, and others, and among those killed, it has been alleged, are the members of religious minorities such as Falun Gong. In reality, the tribunal determined that Falun Gong was the principal source of the or these organs, and they note that persecution of the group began in 1999 after it attracted tens of millions of followers and became and came to be seen as a threat to the Communist Party, ironically just because the CCP didn't like what it stood for, which was truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance. It says also there is less evidence about the treatments of Tibetans, Uyghur Muslims, and some Christian sects. Of course, when people talk about organ harvesting, they often talk about Uyghur Muslims now. Uh, evidence does show that it appears they are targeting them. The tribunal could not determine as substantially that it was happening to other groups. The tribunal found that the main primary source is Falun Gong practitioners. The concerns raised later are that pretty much a lot of these other religious groups are on the side and pretty much they're next in line after the CCP eradicates these, you know, 100 million people who practice Falun Gong in China. In 2020, there was another pretty substantial investigation. This was uh, from the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation. Actually, one of my former colleagues did this one, Matthew Robertson. Um, actually, Math Matthew and I, so he doesn't work with Epic Times anymore. He's an independent researcher now. He's worked with the Victims of Communism Memorial Foundation. He does peer-reviewed studies, and he's one of the main biggest investigators on this. Uh, he had actually won awards for his coverage of the organ harvesting from the, from the Society of Professional Journalists. And so he was also on the forefront of a lot of these investigations. Really incredible guy. Um, he and I worked together a lot. I was more investigating Chinese subversion, spy rings, Chinese mafia, and how the communist government worked that whole system. That was my beat, really. Matthew was on, Matthew Robertson, he was on the beat looking into the organ harvesting. And so he and I worked together a lot, and really great guy. He made a huge breakthrough in 2020 with a peer-reviewed study, a peer-reviewed report that really, in the, at the academic level, changed the whole narrative on the organ harvesting. So on the criminal level, political level, a lot had been done. 2020 was the academic level. And he wrote this report. It says, Organ Procurement and Extrajudicial Execution in China, a Review of the Evidence. It says, Starting in 2000, the PRC, People's Republic of China, rapidly constructed a world-class organ transplantation system that began performing tens of thousands of transplants annually. It continues stating the claim that the majority of organs could have come from death row prisoners is contradicted by the well-established decline in death row executions in 2000 onwards because the CCP used to claim these were death row prisoners they were taking the organs from. It continues stating, evidence pointing to this source includes the coincidence of the anti-Falun Gong campaign in July 20th, 1999, with the rapid growth of China's transplant industry six months later. So July 20th, 1999, the Chinese Communist Party began its persecution of Falun Gong. Six months later, the Chinese Communist Party's transplant interest industry, the organ transplants, just skyrocketed. There was no explanation for it, and the data they provided didn't show any reason why that happened. He continues stating, widely reported blood tests and physical examinations consistent with those required of organ procurement, telephone admissions by Chinese doctors, threats of organ harvesting by prison and labor camp guards, and participants, uh, participation in the anti-Falun Gong campaign by Chinese transplant surgeons. It says, since 2015, due to international pressure, China's organ transplantation system has claimed to source organs from voluntary donors only. Forensic analysis of the relevant data shows that it has been falsified. In other words, the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, has been lying to the world while continuing these atrocities. This appears to be a deliberate attempt to deceive the international medical community as to the current source of organs in China. Given the transplants continue, both at scale and on demand, it appears that a secondary concealed organ source is now also being exploited. He raised the point in 2020, one year after the tribunal, that it appeared that uh, the CCP had begun using uh, more Uyghur Muslims in addition to Falun Gong practitioners. Shocking stuff, folks. Um, I'm going to get on an expert to talk with us more about this. Before we jump over to Epic TV, though, I know we're going a bit long on YouTube, but I hope you enjoy it because I, I think this is an important enough topic, and I really want to, I really 
more than anything, just want to get this story out there because I, a lot of you I know had asked about this previously. You were wondering if this was really true. I know some of the questions you had asked. Uh, is this really happening? And I wanted to show you the evidence because, yeah, the evidence is undeniable at this point. There, there's undeniable evidence. The Chinese Communist Party is using prisoners of conscience for living organ transplants on a massive scale. I'm, I'm not showing you the worst of it, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I mentioned briefly that they do, the, China, the doctors in China, they do this while the individuals are still alive because it reduces chance of organ failure. They also do it without painkillers. And they, they found a way to do that by tying the prisoners up very tightly, using a type of string that will cut into the prisoners if they, you know, shake and so on. Um, they, they've gotten this down to a science of how to kill people for their organs, cutting their organs out of their bodies while they're still living and breathing, and while they still feel this pain. The real important part with this is a couple, a couple of pretty major things for those of us in the United States. First of all, any individual who has been doing business with the Chinese Communist Party, knowing this is taking place since 2019 at the very least, is complicit in these crimes. That means any medical official working with the Chinese Communist Party, any medical establishment like the World Health Organization working with the Chinese Communist Party, any scientific research engaged with Chinese, the Chinese Communist Party, especially on medicine, I won't name any names on that, but I think you know who could, that could be. Investment firms like BlackRock, Fauci better be careful on this as well. These individuals could be implicated in these crimes in the future, in the very near future, I would say. And, I want to sh and in addition to that, too, the CCP is trying to expand this. They, they are corrupting the global medical system through this. And you can look at the things they've done cooperating with medical institutions right here in the United States, NIH, NIAD, all these different organizations working with the Chinese Communist Party while the CCP is carrying out a genocide through these medical systems. And I want to show you the evidence of this because I'm not just, I'm not just spewing a hot air. I'm not just talking about rumor. I'm going to show you the final judgment from that China tribunal making this statement that the crimes, in their own words, are on par with the Holocaust of Nazi Germany, and that anybody who is engaged with the Chinese Communist Party is engaging with the criminal regime and could be held liable for that. I'm going to show you this. We'll jump over to our, do our interview after this in a bit. But I want to make sure to... I want, I want to show you all the evidence, folks. So all of their Doctors killed those innocent people simply because they pursued truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance in the case of Falun Gong practitioners and lived lives of healthy exercise and meditation that was seen as dangerous to the interests and objectives of the totalitarian state of the People's Republic of China. This is a very uncomfortable truth, inconvenient truth. China needs to stop what they're doing. Where else in the world can you go and get an organ within two weeks? I hope today no one can turn around to pretend that they don't know this is happening. It's important that we never lose sight of the human side of this story. I hope this judgment will awaken some uh, consciousness from uh, Chinese surgeons. There's lots of important decisions that we need to make as a, as a transplant community as to how we take this judgment forward. The tribunal concluded with this very powerful statement about uh, any government, any entity, any individual dealing with the Chinese Communist Party state is in effect dealing with a, a criminal state. They actually single out China as a criminal state. And I think nothing will be the same after this. Any who interact in any substantial way with the PRC, including doctors and medical institutions, industry and businesses, most specifically airlines, travel companies, financial services businesses, law firms, pharmaceutical insurance companies, together with individual tourists, educational establishments, and art establishments, should now recognize that they are, to the extent revealed in this judgment, interacting with a criminal state. Yeah, there you go, folks. All these institutions that have been working with the Chinese Communist Party, especially on the medical front, are now working with a criminal state. 
determined officially in 2019 by that China tribunal, the same folks looked into Yugoslavia. And again, really, once this reaches the light of day, once I think I'm showing you, I think we went over some evidence yesterday that uh, really the CCP is on its way down. Once that happens, you can expect Nuremberg-like trials of every individual who's been involved with this. The Chinese Communist Party under Jiang Zemin, the former leader of the Chinese Communist Party, created a pay-to-play system where if you wanted to rise up in power, if you wanted to do business in China, if you wanted to get anywhere, you had to participate in some way within the system. The system he created inside China was the persecution of Falun Gong. You had to get blood on your hands. So, folks, this will be the future. You can expect this to come. The, the truth is already coming out. I mean, I, you know, me and my colleagues have been some of the people at the forefront reporting on this over the years. And it's not, it's, it's one of those stories that you kind of wish you got wrong. You know what I mean? But unfortunately, it says this is happening. All right, that said, folks, we're going to jump over to Epic TV. If you haven't, uh, don't have an account yet, grab, uh, the, grab, go on the link in the description below the video. We're giving you a free trial. We're going to have on a doctor uh, talking about some of this. He's with a group called Doctors Against Forced Organ Harvesting. He's the, he's the deputy director, and he can answer some questions if you, if you folks have any questions. And I want to talk specifically about what this means for the world, because what the CCP is doing with this is they're trying to basically spread this. Because they're able to do transplants on this scale, because they're using, they're killing people for them. They're, they're, they're murdering people for transplants, essentially, on a massive scale. Because they're doing that, they become, you know, the quote-unquote world leaders in transplant, transplant science. And if they can lead this, if they can advance this, they want to make that system the global system. Um, it's a pretty important interview. The, jump over to Epic TV, don't have an account yet. We'll have more discussion there. Also, folks, before we jump over, I want to show you a trailer as well of another video we have on Epic TV. This is Trevor Loudon on how communism actually works. Today I'm going to talk about how communism is actually implemented. Most communist programs are implemented by non-communist governments. How do small groups of communists actually impact policy on a national basis? In 1994, the Democratic Socialist America also took over the AFL-CIO. Under John Sweeney, a Marxist, a member of Democratic Socialists of America, the ban on communists holding office in the AFL-CIO was lifted and the communists came flooding in and now control virtually every major labor union in the country. Alice o. Medina, Democratic Socialist America and the AFL-CIO made support for illegal immigration amnesty part of the Democrat program. A communist idea is now mainstream Democrat. All right, folks, come join us over on Epic TV. We're going to have a great discussion over there, something very important. Again, Dr. Weldon, with the, he's the Deputy Director of Doctors Against Forced Organ Harvesting, on with us now. We'll jump over now. See you there. All right.